Namaste to all. Welcome to Easy Ayurveda Gurukula session. Yet another session with uh, yet another guru, guru with yet another uh, interesting topic of discussion uh, today. Uh, we have uh, our guest speaker, Dr. Saujanya J with us. Uh, welcome to Easy Ayurveda Gurukula, Dr. Saujanya. Namaste. Namaste, sir. And uh, hearty welcome to all uh, the participants and the family of Easy Ayurveda uh, for uh, joining Gurukula session today. So before starting the session, may I, ha may I have the privilege of uh, introducing our uh, guest speaker on behalf of uh, Easy Ayurveda. Dr. Saujanya J uh, is uh, working as assistant professor in the department of Kai Chikitsa in uh, SDM Institute of Ayurveda and uh, Hospital. Very good teacher and a busy practitioner pursuing a PhD uh, in Ayurveda right now from uh, Ayurveda Mahavidyalaya Publi. Also has a uh, MA in Sanskrit, uh, Medic in Sanskrit. Has done many paper presentations at various forms, forums and has been felicitated with uh, many awards including uh, Rashtrapati Puraskar and uh, International Best uh, Research Scholar Award, Real Superwoman Award in uh, 2022, Rashtriya Ratna Samman Award, Iconic Researcher and Young Researcher Awards uh, to name a few. Has been uh, a resource person and uh, guest lecturer in uh, many forms. Six articles published in various uh, journals and has many paper presentations at national, international and state levels uh, to her name. So today, Dr. Saujanya will be presenting to us a very important topic. It is uh, the second part. Uh, the first part was introduction to Vatavadi. Dr. Saujanya has given a good lecture on uh, introduction to Vatavadi and has introduced us all to uh, the complicated topic of uh, water valley and its basics so today it will be a continuation from there today's topic will be a comprehensive interpretation on uh, nidana panchaka of uh, water valley dr sojani uh, you may start your presentation thank you thank you sir uh, before starting today's topic i'll just brush up the last topic which i had ended the nirukti of and paribhasha of vata vyadi where i had stated that vatena janito asadharana vyadihi ti vata vyadihi the all the special set of disorders which are caused due to prakupita vata dosha can be considered under vata vyadi moving into next topic that is continuation of the first topic a comprehensive interpretation on nidana panchaka of vata vyadi first moving into nidana that is etiology acharya charaka in his chikitsa sthana 28 chapter states that ruksha shitalpa laghvanna vyavaya ati prajagaraihi vishamad upachara cha dosha asrak sravanadati langhana plavana atyadva vyayama ati vicheshtitaihi धातूनाम संशया चिंता शोक रोगा कर्षणा दुख शय्या सना क्रोधा दिवा स्वप्ना भयादी वेग संधारणा घाता अभोजना मर्माघात गज उष्ट अश्व शीघ्र यापतंसना सो दिस आर दैट ऑफ इटिजिकल फैक्टर्स विच हेज बीन मेन्शन फॉर वातव्यादी दिस कैन बी डिवेडेड इन टू थ्री एस्पेक्ट एस आहार ज viharaja and manasika moving into aharaja nidana first is ruksha here always we have to understand ruksha simplifies excessive that is ati ruksha anna sevana and prolonged usage of ruksha ahara such as yava gai chapati or saridhanya for a continuous period of time and excessive in quantity then only it leads to a vyadhi otherwise in a normal quantity doesn't leads to any vyadhi second is ati shita anna sevana again excessive and prolonged usage of shita ahara such as deep refrigerated food substances alpa ahara sevana consumption of very less quantity of food in spite of good appetite lagho anna sevana excessive and prolonged usage of lagho ahara that is food substances which are light to digest such as mudga usually nowadays it is a habit of eating sprouted green grams or many different um, kinds of grams with the salad instead of meals which again end up with vata vyadi Vishama Upachara, here Vishama Upachara refers to Vishama Ahara and Vishama Ashana. Vishama Ahara refers to untimely food habits, consumption of junk foods, not following the Ashta Ahara Vidhi Vishesha or Ahara Vidhi such as Ushna Mashniya, Snigdha Mashniya, Matrava Tashniya, that is the food substance should be hot in nature. It should be proper quantity and proper quality. All those things if we doesn't follow. Ati Sevan of Kattu Tikta Kashaya Rasa Pradhana Ahara such as gobe chilli vishamashana states that akale bahuva alpam phuktam ta vishamashanam either in irregular time or very excessively or very less 
even though if the appetite is very good eating less if the appetite is very less eating more leads to vata vyadhi next is ama ama is a indigested food material we can think about now which does kapha prakopa again leads to marga varodha of vata this i'll be explaining detailly while i go for etiopathogenesis and vata prakopa next reason is abhojana that is upavasa which directly causes uh, vata gunavriddhi and leading to vata prakopa these contributes to ahara jana nidana that is food substances which causes vata vyadhi next moving into vihara jana nidana first is ati vyavaya indulging in excessive sexual activities ati prajagara awakening at night for longer duration for example avoiding sleep due to excessive usage of gadgets such as mobile phones laptops night shifts which all of us have been habituated nowadays vishama upachara vishama vihara and vishama sho dhana vishama vihara is sitting in improper position such as an unevenly chair for longer duration of time whereas vishama shodhana or panchakarma leads to indulging in improper vamanaadi shodhana or panchakarma here panchakarma or vamana vrechana basti nasya and rakta moksha among them anything if we do improperly that is considered as vishama for example excessive vamana leading to anila or vata prakopa has been a direct reference from charaka siddhistana first chapter 7 shloka next is dosha asrak sravana here we can interpret this dosha asrak sravana in three ways one is elimination of excessive dosha for example if we give haritaki for anulomana artha in excessive dosage there will be excessive mala sravana that is excessive atasara leading to vata sravana and vata prakopa again elimination of excessive asrak such as excessive rakta mokshana vata prakopa is the ultimate cause leading to vata vyadhi and the bleeding disorders such as hemorrhoids internal bleeding hemorrhage always leads to vata prakopa ending up with vata vyadhis ati langhana always we will have a wrong interpretation of this ati langhana thinking that it is not having food already acharya charaka has been emphasized on lagu ahara and upavasa here mainly langhana refers to jumping one instance of ramayana can be taken here where hanumanta does langhana from india to sri lanka the word langhana mainly here refers to excessive jumping but not related to food substances ati plavana excessive swimming ati adhva excessive walking ati vyayama excessive indulging in exercises even after exertion continuing the exercises we all know that there is a specific rules to follow the vyayama ardha shaktya nishevyastu balibas nidda bhojivih so we have to stop the vyayama when we feels that we had done with it if we still excessively does it always it ends up with vata vyadhi then ati vicheshtana excessive and repeated movements such as moving legs continuously while sitting atukshaya example rasarakta adhikshaya whereas there is a direct reference of rasakshaya rasayaraukshad bhramashoshah glani shabda asahishnutah which indirectly tells it is a vata prakopa and again leading to vata vyadhi roga atikarshana attaining krishata due to long standing diseases such as longer duration of kasha cough rajayakshma tuberculosis or karshata always leads to vata prakopa dukha shayasana improper sitting and bedding arrangements divasopna we have two references that acharya charaka and vagpata says divasopna does kapha prakopa leading to avarana of vata again vata vyadi and also acharya sushruta states that it does the tridosha prakopa again vata is one among the tridosha vega sandharana suppression of natural urges which directly impacts on vata dosha and does vata prakopa leading to vata vyadi and abhigata injuries such as road traffic accident cva whereas excessively vata prakopa takes place then comes marmaghata that is injury to marma for example injury to kurpara marma that is elbow joint which is considered as rujakara marma which is which gives pain and vaikalyakara marma if there is any injury to uh, kurpara marma that is your elbow joint there will be vata prakopa leading to severe pain then gaja ushra ashva shigha yana patamsanat excessive traveling falling from gajadi while traveling is the explanation which has been given earlier now we can consider as traveling in bikes for long distance bike skid which directly leads to load back ache or 
pain that is nothing but vata prakopa itself this is about the viharaja nidana which has been stated then moving into manasika nidana that is psychological factors which contribute to the vata vyadhi are chinta that is ati chinta excessive thinking overthinking for example we all know that excessive thinking leads to headache which can be interpreted to vata prakopa itself again shoka that is ati shoka grief it has been explanation of seven stages of grief which include shock and denial pain guilt which are the major signs and symptoms of vata prakopa itself next is krodha again ati krodha excessive anger effects of anger includes headache fatigue interpreted as vata prakopa again. bhaya that is ati bhaya effects of fear includes decreased salivary secretions constriction of blood vessels as i said before vata is the one which carries out all the cellular processes up to the systemic processes so ati bhaya leads to vata prakopa these are the nidana or the causative factors which has been attributed for all the vata vyadhis in general moving into purva rupa that is premonitory symptoms acharya charaka states that avyaktam lakshanam tesham purva rupam itasmritam atma rupam tu tadvyaktam apayo lakhuta punaha so there are no specific premonitory symptoms which has been ex- explained or the premonitory symptoms are not clear for any vata vyadhi like atma roopam to tad vyaktam what does it means if the signs and symptoms gets manifested they should be considered as lakshana itself that is symptoms itself and when these gets diminished it indicates the subsidence of disorder usually we misinterpret this shloka as if there is formation of purva rupa it will lead to apaya no it is not like that if there is exhibition of purva rupa it should be considered as lakshana itself for example i had taken an example for interpretation of this purva rupa as pakshagata where lakshana states that hatvaikam marutam paksham dakshinam vama mevava kuriya chesta nivrittim hi rujam vakstambham evacha here the condition of pakshagata where it states there is vata prakop sthana samshaya to either one has the one side of the body or both the side of the borders which causes ruja that is severe pain vakstamba difficulty in speaking and weakness of the affected side is acute in nature and there will be no any specific premonitory symptoms if these symptoms manifest it should be considered as signs and symptoms it's itself but not premonitory symptoms usually pakshagata is interpreted with cva stroke paralysis or paraplegia where a definition of stroke says that a stroke or cerebral vascular accident is defined as an abrupt onset so there is no premonitory symptom always the onset is acute or abrupt of neurologic deficit that is attributable to a focal vascular cause this is about the purva rupa or premonitory symptom of vata vyadhi moving into third aspect that is rupa signs and symptoms where acharya states that tankochah parvanam stambho bhedo asnam parvanam api lomaharsha pralapascha pani prishtha shiro ಗರ್ಭಶುಕ್ರಜೋನಾಶಿರೋನಾಕ್ಷಿಜತ್ರೋಣೇದಸ್ತೋದರ್ತಿರಾಕ್ಷೇಪೋ ಮೋಹಶ್ಚಾಯಾಸಿಕುಪಿಲ ಹೇತುಸ್ಥಾನವಿಶೇಷ್ಚೇತ್ ರೋಗ ವಿಶೇಷಕೃತ್ ಸೋ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಅಪ್ ಈಚ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ signs and symptoms what does it means and how it can be interpreted in further slides first um, signs and symptom which has been attributed is sankocha which is considered as contractures or contraction the interpretation can be made such as dupuytren's contracture conditions leading to contractures such as stroke nerve damage muscular dystrophy muscle and bone injury and trauma second is parvanam stambha stiffness in joints especially small joints such as metacarpo phalangeal joints whereas interpretation can be made such as arthritis gout lupus bursitis which all comes under the vata vyadhi bhedo asnam parvanam api typical pain that is cutting type of pain in bones and joints such as osteoarthritis and fracture lomaharsha is a horripilation where there is a contracture of cutaneous muscle producing the erection of the hairs or horripilation in the cases of extreme cold or fear we had seen that one of the causative factors of vata vyadhi is excessive fear also excessive sheeta that is cold in nature next pralapa 
excessive or irrelevant speech such as loss or disturbed orientation speech disorders ani prishtha shirograha stiffness in hands back and head region such as cervical spondylitis lumbar spondylitis khanja pangulya kubjatvam lameness of one lower limb or both the lower limbs or kyphosis attitude or forward bending of the body each condition has been specifically explained as vata vyadi vishesha as a separate entity anga shosha dystrophy of organs such as muscular dystrophy anidrata loss of sleep such as sleep deprivation insomnia and sleep related disorders such as insomnia etc garbha shukra rajo nashah loss of fetus semen and menstruation specifically apanavata vaigunya such as miscarriage iud azoospermia oligospermia pathological amenorrhea can be considered spandana here spandana can be understood in two ways that is spandana nasha and gatra spandana dana that is sensory disturbances and throbbing sensations sensory disturbance can be hypostasia such as tactile sensory disturbance whereas throbbing sensation can be peripheral neuropathy or migraine where there is specific throbbing headache gatra suptata numbness such as neuropathy radiculopathies shiro nasa akshi jatru griva hundana acharya chakrapani gives specific explanation for specific hundanas For Shiro Hundana, Acharya Chakrapani says that Kesha Bhumi Sputana, Shankha Lalata Bheda, that is loss of hairs and headaches such as alopecia and different kinds of headaches. Nasa Hundana, Ghrana Nasha, that is smell sensation disturbances such as altered smell perceptions in case of Alzheimer's, Parkinsonisms. Akshi Hundana, Akshi Vyudasa, tiredness of eyes, visual disturbances such as visual disturbances due to stroke, cranial nerve palsy, especially optic olfactory nerves and oculomotor. And Jatra Hundana, Vaksha Uparodha, pain in the chest that is due to trauma. Next, Griva Hundana, Griva Thamba, special neck stiffness such as cervical spondylitis. The last five symptoms are Bheda and Toda, different kinds of pain such as breaking, pricking, tearing in case of neuralgia and neuritis. arati restlessness or involuntary movements such as tremors akshepa convulsions such as seizures moha state of confusions stage of dilutions ayasa weakness or lethargy weakness of limb paralysis or generalized weakness so each and every rupa have its own meaning and can be interpreted into different kinds of vata vyadis as above mentioned we had finished now nidana purva rupa rupa and moving into the major aspect that is samprapti that is pathophysiology of vata vyadi here mainly two kinds of pathophysiology have been attributed for vata vyadi one is dhatu kshaya janya samprapti one more is marga avarodha janya or avarana janya samprapti first i'll be taking up with dhatu kshaya janya samprapti which states that dehe srotam se riktani पूरयित्वा अनिलो बलि करोति विविधान व्याधिन सर्वांग एकांग संशितम सो वी हैड सीन अ डिफरेंट कॉजिटिव फैक्टर्स दैट इज आहार ज विहार ज मानसिक निदानस बेस्ड ऑन दिस कॉजिटिव फैक्टर्स इट लीड्स टू वातदोष प्रकोप यूजुअली दिस प्रकोपित वात फिल्स द रिक्त स्रोतस आचार्य चक्रपाणी स्पेसिफिकली स्टेट्स रिक्त स्रोतस इति स्नेहादि गुण अभावाः सो द मेन गुणस ऑफ वात इज रुक्ष शीतालघ्वन्न व्यवाय अति प्रजागर सो रूक्ष तत्र रूक्षो लघु शीत कर सूक्ष्म चलो अनिल दर् इंक्रीज इन दात गुण आलो दर् ससेप्टेबिटी स्नेहादि गुण अभावाः so there is no sneha guna that is ruksha guna is there in the srotas it forms the susceptibility to vata gets prakopa this vata prakopita vata enters this rikta srotas leading to various set of diseases karoti vividan vyadhi such as sarvanga ekanga samshita which affects either a particular part of the sharira or entire sharira this is considered as dhatu kshaya janya samprapti because here the sneha guna abhava will be there a specific dhatu which is susceptible where the sneha guna abhava is there will be affected so this is considered as dhatu kshaya janya samprapti whereas second one is marga avarodha janya samprapti which states that sarve shveteshu samsargam pittadhe rupalakshayet vayur dhatu kshayat kopo margasya avaranena va vata pitta kafa dehe sarvasroto anusarina vayureva hi सूक्ष्मत्वात् वायोस्तत्रा सूक्ष्मीर्ण कुपितस्तौ समुद्धूय तत्र तत्र क्षिपान्गतान्
So as I said, Dhatukshya Janya Samprapti, where there is diminution of tissue elements, where Avarana Janya or Margavaroda Janya Samprapti, where there is obstruction to pathway of Vata. We had discussed in my last presentation that Pittam Pangum, Kafam Pangum, Pangavo Maladhata Vaha, Vayuna Yetra Niyanti, Tatra Gachanti Meghavat. So here the Vata, Pitta and Kafa, as already explained, always circulates through all body channels and exhibits their physiological functions. Among them, Vata being subtle, it is the impeller of Kapha and Pitta. Pittam Pangum, Kapham Pangum. When this Vata is provoked by the other Prakupita Dosha, such as Pitta and Kapha, obstructing its pathway, it produces various disorders based on the site of obstruction. This is Margava Rodajanya Samprapti. Ashtangra Deyakara clubs these two Samprapti's telling that Charan Srotas Surikteshu Prusham Taneva Purayan Tebhyo Anya Dosha Purne Bhyaha Prapyava Avarano Bali. So Prakupita Vata, which affects the Rikta Srotas, leading to Vata Vyadhi. Also the Vata Dosha, which gets Prakopa due to Anya Dosha, such as Pitta Kafadi Avarana, leads to Vata Vyadhi. Similar explanation has been given. To concise this entire Samprapti, a flowchart can be made as follows. So there is Nidana Sevana, that is especially Ruksha Shitalpa, which does Dhatukshaya, which causes Riktata in Srotas, which are susceptible where there is Nehadi Guna Abhava, leading to Prakupita Vata Dosha, which does Purana in Rikta Srotas, again Rukshadi Guna Vriddhi, leading to Dhatukshaya Janya Vata Vyadhi. Next is Margava Rodha Janya Vata Vyadhi, where Nidana Sevana, leading to Amadoshadi or Kafapitta Dosha Vriddhi. There is Roto Rodha, that is obstruction of channel or pathway of Vata. Here Vata Chala Guna Avarodha takes place, leading to Vata Prakopa. Sangha and Vimarga Gamana of Vata happens, leading to Margava Rodha Janya or Avarana Janya Vata Vyadhi. So how to understand this Margava Rodha Janya I'll be taking up one example that is Pakshagata. So, in one condition of Pakshagata, we can assess two Sampraptis, Dhatukshaya Janya Samprapti as well as Margava Rodha Janya Samprapti. Dhatukshaya Janya Samprapti tells that there is Nidana Sevana, Vata Prakopa, Sthana Samshaya of Prakupita Vata that is dislodges its place to other place either to right side of the body or to the left side of the body leading to loss of function in affected side pain and speech disturbances here mainly the mastishka majja will be affected whereas margava rodha janya or avarana janya samprapti there will be nidana sevana pitta or kapha prakopa such as divasopna ama which obstructs the vata, in turn does vata prakopa, again sthana samshaya of prakupita vata in either right side or left side of the body. To be very specific, if there is pitta samanvita, there will be santapa, daha and murcha, that is burning sensation which is attributed to pitta dosha, raised in temperature in the affected part and affected the level of consciousness. Whereas shleshma samanvita along with kevala vata lakshana, that is either one side of the body, Right or left will be surely affected. Along with that, there will be shaitya, coldness in the affected part, shotha, edema and gurutva, heaviness in affected part, which can be easily interpreted for different kinds of stroke. For example, hemorrhagic stroke, which occurs when blood vessels that supplies the brain ruptures and bleed. Rakta dhatu has been affected, dhatukshya janya samprapti, whereas thrombotic stroke and embolic stroke caused by a blood clot that develops in the blood vessels inside the brain or caused by a blood clot or plague debris that develops elsewhere in the body and then travels to one of the blood vessels in the brain. That is obstructing the pathway or blocking the channels which leads to Margava Rodha Janya or Avarana Janya Samprapti. So moving into last part of Nidana Panchaka that is Upashaya and Anupashaya. We had understood what are the causative factors of Vata Vyadi, when pre premonitory symptoms were there, what are the Lakshana or signs and symptoms where Vata Vyadi person will exhibit, how does the pathophysiology or etiopathogenesis takes place and the last part of Nidana Panchaka that is Upashaya or Anupashaya with interpretation. Upashaya refers to Vyadi Asatme Itihi, a protocol that is Ahara, Vihara, Karma and Aushada, which is beneficial for Sharira, but not for Hetu. And Vyadi is considered as Upashaya. For example, Ahara, what I had told as Siridhanya, which is beneficial for 
causative factor and vyadhi that is not upashaya here whereas that is anupashaya here upashaya for vata vyadhi mainly such as which have opposite gunas opposite karma to vata opposite to ruksha that is nigda such as mamsarasa dugda ghrita taila vasa and majja that is uh, different preparations which consists of snigdhata rasa is specifically madhura amla lavana rasa guru guna snigdha guna mrudu guna and ushna guna using warm clothes proper nidra nivata shayana is vihara whereas karma leading to snehana abhyanga sveda upanahana and aushada specifically balya brumhana vedana hara rasayana a proper example can be a simple eranda taila which have all these effects simple kshirapaka which have all these effect can be considered as upashaya in case of vata vyadi whereas anupashaya protocol which is similar to hetu vyadi opposite to upashaya that is mentioned as nidana for a particular disses here all the nidana that is causative factors which has been attributed such as atimatra dirgha kala shashkuli bakshana or siradhanya prayoga in ahara that is millets and other combinations rasa specifically katutikta kashaya rasas guna laguruksha shita gunas vihara specifically of using cold cloth ratri jagarana divas swapna that is awakening at night divas swapna sleeping in the morning hours and rukshana karma all these are considered as anupashaya for vata vyadi so here the interpretation of nidana panchaka nidana purva rupa rupa samprapti and upashaya and anupashaya of vata vyadi has been dealt with thank you so we have a question from uh, vikram ji uh, dr sojana referred to millets as diet which should be avoided as such the millets as a diet once or twice in a week is fine every day having the millets skipping breakfast skipping lunch skipping dinner considering a freaky diet pattern should be avoided surely so but uh, dr sojana millets nowadays is uh, a concept which people are uh, behind millets like exploring millets so wherever there is some talk on millets or uh, uh, something some article on millets so people are like uh, crazy about uh, taking millets so sir actually you... that that's where uh, we had got a special causative factor after seeing people moving into siridhanya especially when they say it is good for diabetics people started eating it in morning afternoon night leaving all the diet and food habits which they had practiced for years together and typically they ended up with knee joint pain sir this is what we had ex- uh, seen practically or clinically so that should be surely avoided if one time or 15 days once or weekly once surely it is fine but daily skipping the breakfast skipping the food habits which were followed since years surely it causes vata vyadi but did you really encounter because millets is becoming a favorite food for many people so uh, now there are so many cases sir who are did eating you- siridhanya ending up with knee joint pain are those are those uh, patients or clients a challenge uh, to the doctors like uh, uh, when you tell no to certain things always our liked and uh, most loved foods when you tell no there will be a lot of debate and questions why can i take this much can i take that much little quantity what is moderate quantity uh, did you f- feel such challenges in uh, convincing the patients not to take the seridanyas or the millets uh, uh especially in water weather condition uh sir many times when people come with them pain will be their major symptoms so they for me it was not the, that difficult to convince them because they want to get rid of pain and they have to follow this once they had stopped it immediately they had seen a very good results and they had even told this to their family members so i didn't find much difficulty stopping those different types of diets sir what is your take on uh, those people who don't have uh, vata vyadi or uh, may so- show some small signs of because they have come with uh, some some problem x uh, to the clinic maybe a prameha or some other condition uh, we are examining the patient there may be small signs of vata vyadi is it good enough to advise uh, to avoid these things as a precaution like uh, if we find that they are the pura rupa avasthas of vata vyadi which may develop into full blown symptoms surely sir uh, we can suggest them not to have it on a regular basis so that they can have it either 15 days once or monthly once so that the susceptibility to get vata vyadi will be surely avoided uh, kalpana ji asks uh, once a week taking sprouts once a week is it okay uh i think this question is more or pertaining to water bathing confined uh, yes. i specially uh, say uh, my patients not to take sprouts for i even the weekly ones 15 days once normal 
grams which is cooked is fine but when it gets sprouted it is more susceptible to get vata vyadhi and already who have vata vyadhi again it will aggravate specifically the pain and swelling whereas the protein part of the sprouts is very dangerous to specific part so that can be avoided so if it is not uh, if we leave the context and uh, the topic of discussion if it is not a vata vyadhi what would be your general suggestion to the people about millets and sprouts not to take it daily to be very specific they can use it very oftenly like um, weekly once or 15 days once but not daily leaving the food habits which our ancestors have been followed which includes ghee which includes butter which includes milk uh, we completely leave the snigdamsha which is very much necessary for our cells even our cells are made up of lipoproteins we purposefully make the cells starve deny of lipoproteins leading to many disorders that should be surely avoided sir thank you there and uh, i think uh, pragnya ji also in a question like it is also an answer uh, dr sprouts were mentioned uh, as vata aggravating i believe in its raw form do you suggest cooking sprouts uh, dr saujanya just now replied that cooking uh, should be okay like for sprouts like allowing sprouts without cooking and allowing sprouts after cooking uh, will it uh, make a big difference there uh, sure sir even i suggest not to cook the sprouts rather than to cook the whole grain as such okay, thank you sir uh, so you also mentioned about raw sprouts how about adding ghee to raw sprouts while consuming to add snigdha and guru gunas i assume that should help is vikram ji's question surely it doesn't help uh, because it will be like uh, adding uh, some chili powder to raw ice cream probably uh, that way it, it doesn't work at all uh, so not to follow such things even what are the causative factors which has been explained should not be compensated in adding the things rather than it should be left out so that doesn't work when you add ghee with sprouts rather than avoiding the sprouts will be better okay thank you sir uh, actually ice cream is also very popular nowadays like <laughs> ice creams coming with uh, uh, plenty of combinations uh, probably that we will touch in the chikitsa part uh, rather as a preventive aspect uh, what is your take on ice cream since you have mentioned ice creams coffee tea a uh, very popular uh, beverage is this uh, uh, people are preferring to take uh, what is your preference and take on coffee tea and uh, ice cream the advices very popular for uh, like they can have it often not very oftenly 15 days once or a monthly once is fine but eating ice creams instead of food Uh, that too very refrigerated e- drinking a big cup of coffee like uh, how we will drink it water that should be surely avoided now it has become a trendy thing to have um, green tea instead of breakfast black coffee instead of bla- breakfast surely it end up with vata vyadhi that should be 100 percently avoided natural nirima ji asks a question if a2 cow milk is not available can a1 milk be consumed to reduce vata dosha in the body i really hmm. don't have any idea about a2 and a1 milk yeah not sure uh, uh, as well so yeah so we'll keep this question and uh, let's explore through natural nilima ji so if you can uh, so actually a2 cow milk means uh, regular desi cow our uh, indian cow with the hum okay. and a1 is the jersey and all the hybrid cows so oh, better to go for a2 and if you want to replace it with the a1 please dilute it madam that will help in reduction of vata vyadhis because i had explained the avarna janya samprapti where there is obstruction if the desi cow is not there and if there is hybrid or something that it may be end up with again a different pathogenesis of vata vyadhi so it can be diluted and can be have if a1 a2 is not at all available okay thank you question from kalpana ji like a samanya siddhanta dr saujanya so like a samanya siddhanta siddhanta we can can we tell that uh, generally as per ayurveda sprouts uh, shall be avoided as a general rule as a general rule daily and excessive consumption of sprouts should be avoided ati, to be very specific ati should be avoided right ati should okay. be avoided yeah dr rajnikant patel is here welcome uh, dr rajnikant uh, to the session gurukula session hearing about sprouted food actually it is a uh, 100% prohibited a uh, vatvyadi nidana in charak samhita if we read then it is called a viruddha dhanya 
ओके सो इट इज द मेन रीजन फॉर वाटा प्रोवोकेशन ओके एंड नाउ इट इज अ ट्रेंड इवन आयुर्वेदिक डॉक्टर और मेनी डायटिशियन आल्सो एडवाइज पीपल टू टेक स्प्राउटेड दिस मिलेट बट दैट एक्चुअली इज इंक्रीजिंग वाइव आई एम टॉकिंग इन जनरल बिकॉज वी हैव सीन पेशेंट कमिंग टू अस दैट से those doctor said you 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 use this uh, sprouted moong or sprouted in the dal in the morning but uh, i think it is uh, in charak samhita where it is uh, strictly uh, contraindicated in it has been put in the list of uh, vayu vardhak uh, this nidana for what we are doing so viruddha viruddha dhanya it is called viruddha dhanya and it is uh, 100% prohibited it is a vayu prakopak nidana okay thank you for uh, that clarification dr rajnikanth uh, viruddha dhanya or the sprouts uh, shall be awarded uh, in a uh, vata like excessive cons- consumption by vata prakriti people and vata vikrutis uh, those who are prone to get vata varies and those who have symptom proper of what no in general nobody should eat it eat this at all not for just uh, we having vayu Okay. okay like so this diva is... sapna and ratri jagrana na no nobody should do it is mm-hmm. not like that those who are having vayu too much uh, they can do diva jagrana or ratri sapna like that mm-hmm. it should be avoided for healthy person also for healthy person also okay yes. so then uh, that is what charak is uh, talking about okay so then uh, it is uh, aptopadesha we will uh, uh, consider that and we will extend the Uh, usage of uh, like ban of uh, sprouts uh, not only for water. Ah, it is like the uh, same. Uh, <laughs> we, we, uh, Ratri Jagrana, Ati Chakramana. In the same mm-hmm. idan, it is a Virudha Danya. Is a patya. A patya. Ah, hundred percent. Okay. That is in so, Charak Samhita. Uh, we if yeah. we go detail, we will find it. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Rajnikanth, for your inputs okay. and uh, adding uh, this uh, a generalized contradiction for uh, uh, Virudha Danya. So, for uh, by any people, uh, thank you there. Uh, your take on this, uh, our Vata Vadi specialist, uh, Dr. Sojane, uh, about what Dr. Rajnikanth uh, he said. Hundred percent with sir, sir. I always tell my patients to avoid it. Absolutely. So this this goes as uh, so we will take home this message uh, today uh, that uh, Virudha Danya, as per uh, Acharya Charaka and with opinion of Dr. Rajnikanth and. Dr. Sojanya also uh, not only for Vata Vedi as a generalized contradiction, so we shall uh, stamp it as banned food or uh, not to be Definitely. used food. Yes, not to be used food. Thank you, thank you, sir. So we have made a statement here. So <laughs> any questions coming from that, we'll take it later. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir, so much, doctor. So and uh, Nina Shaji has a question here. Which grain do you suggest for Vata Vedi? now suggestions indications wheat is generally uh, genetically modified all over the world which is uh, which is the best grain for vata considering uh, wheat is genetically modified which is the best dhanya you would uh, suggest best grain you would suggest for vata vadi uh, vata vadi since since vata vadi has been mentioned here i think uh, for those suffering from vata vadi i think uh, the patya part uh, has been questioned here i had already explained in uh, upashaya part that ahara which is nagda specifically in dhanya varga if you want to consider we can go for shashtika shali which is shreshtha and i usually tell my patients to come back to their diet of eating at least rice once rather than eating the millets then that that will be best what i will feel uh, dr padmana burugwedi sir is here uh, doctor doctor Uh, does uh, prebiotics and uh, probiotics help in vata vedi prebiotics and probiotics do they help in vata vedi uh, my uh, you, point is uh, like uh, prebiotics and probiotics are generally used to maintain the gut uh, microflora balance so we have uh, this concept of gut brain axis uh, which is being uh, analyzed in many of the neurological conditions and uh, maybe our basti treatment also has an angle of maintaining that gut microflora in uh, you know we are uh, administering uh, sneha dravyas and uh, maybe helping in uh, maintaining that gut microflora so from that angle like administration or supplementation of prebiotics or probiotics uh, can we think of maybe useful in uh, vata vedi b uh, upashaya which and all aharas has been mentioned will surely help Uh, because as you said always gut brain meta- metabolism is always considered in treating any vata vyadi so advice in patya prebiotics and probiotics will surely help sir okay okay thank you doctor most of the prebiotics are generally fibers and the source of fibers is again vegetables and fruits so uh, want to add anything on this like is there any uh, no contrast in this considered like, vata vyadi like especially in vata vyadi i will tell you to avoid the tubers such as potato 
it or brinjal which again causes vata prakopa except that the fiber rich food doesn't have any issues with vata vyadi patients sir so it can be advised okay okay thank you if vata vyadi is uh, because of kapha varna kapha varta vata conditions can millet be used in kapha varta vata conditions none of the condition millets is used it is a causative factor either in dhatakshaya janya or avarna janya so we have to avoid it even there is kapha vrata vata first kapha vilayana can be done by means of udvartanadi procedures then we have to follow the vata vyadi kevala nirupastamba chikitsa no millets as a treatment protocol in vata vyadi okay i think that clarifies uh, jay raguji has question uh, can consuming sugar increase vata vyadi like in joint pain sugar versus vata vyadi oh, till now i had not encountered any Yes, sir. Has to see further. Taking uh, Madura Rasa is Vata Shamaka. How can we? It is Vata Shamaka. <laughs> so till now I had not seen any relevance between sugar and Vata Vyadi as such. So no. Many many things I think need to be explored. So every point, every question is a, a source of research. And uh, so if questions rise, uh, we may go ahead and explore. We may start noting that if sugar uh, something else in the questions may be affecting the. Uh, the symptoms or those of infam water value uh, so right. true yes yeah. and uh, pragna ji uh, asks a question doctor can you please talk about vegetable smoothies i Veg i'll smoothies. tell them to avoid it sir they add all the nonsense things such as cabbage cauliflower banana everything in a smoothie and they'll drink in morning which end up with not only vata vyadi but various disorders i'll tell them to stop that first so that's a straight answer about smoothies and uh, other foods which are uh, not desired kavita ji has a question uh, dr saujanya vata provocation after extreme summer how can we avoid this how can we avoid vata provocation following extreme summer uh, so a specific regimens have been explained as rutucharya in our classical text that has to be followed to avoid the vata provocation after extreme summer details i'll be sharing later rishma is considered to be vata sanchaya Uh, season for vata sanchaya there and then uh, varsha is considered to be a season for uh, vata prakopa mona but ji has a question or what this dr rajnikant sometimes here rogi goes to functional doctors and they advise for sprouted dhanya <laughs> rajnikant sir a question for you here dr rajnikant sometimes here rogi goes to functional doctors and they advise for sprouted dhanya so so should we listen to the doctors or uh, take a decision no, the the problem that uh, ayurveda still doesn't uh, have much uh, recognition is uh, we itself uh, we ayurvedic doctor uh, also don't know what uh, real ayurveda is we just uh, <laughs> listen some webinar for one hour or we just uh, read some books for uh, 10 days and uh, we claim that we are ayurvedic doctor actually real ayurveda is uh, not visible anywhere in the world all are doing their comfortable zone practice means uh, like this it happens when we go to the deep in the shastra there is many contradictory things that we advise to the patient but actually it is against uh, to our shastra like this uh, viruddha dhanya Ankurit dhanya is a uh, uh, main uh, grammi ahar. It is one among the grammi ahar, sprouted item. So there are many things uh, which we need to first. Uh, we should uh, learn this before advising to the patient. So deep study of shastra is uh, must. Right, right. <laughs> that is my input on this. Thank you, Dr. Rajendra Kandar. And I think uh, uh, this also these questions also help us in a way. that in future guru bada and guru kula sessions uh, we might uh, dedicate one session at least in a month for exploring the. various foods uh, and uh, dietetic regimens and also the contraindicated and indicated foods uh, and activities uh, pertaining to different disorders so that should uh, make things clear for uh, ayurveda students and practitioners sandhi ji has some question here consuming ragi malt uh, on daily basis is healthy or instead of that's the question first uh, we'll take it bit by bit consuming ragi malt is one instead of coffee mostly aged people have this as a regular drink in the morning that is ragi malt itself even for 5 months babies it is given on regular basis ragi malt again how many days once it is advisable it is advisable or not and is it a replacement as a replacement to coffee it is okay in adults and in babies consumption of ragi malt this is generalized uh, so, question uh, the explanation what has been given as sprouted ragi green gram etc are surely not given to babies there is a specific way of preparing the ragi siri what we will give for babies like they'll just fry the ragi then they'll uh, 
um, heat it in the sunlight then they'll cool it in sunlight again they'll take it back they'll mix with milk and ghee then they'll give it give to the babies usually what has been traditionally followed but nowadays it has been changed to sprouted ragi green gram etc that is not advisable to babies as such the ragi siri what we will give for babies surely it can be given on daily basis which was traditionally done before so the combination what you had mentioned cannot be taken on daily basis uh, neither it is healthy and instead of coffee the traditional ragi drink which has been mentioned uh, along with snigdha ahara such as milk or he can be consumed rather than this which has been mentioned thank you dr dr sojanya and uh, pragna ji uh, has one more question uh, like eggplant or brinjal is water aggravating do you suggest some specific vegetables to be avoided in water vadi general kitchen vegetables which should be avoided in water vadi or oh, usually potato brinjal cabbage cauliflower uh, the one which grows down the ground which are guru in nature such as uh, sweet potato should be surely avoided in water vadi thank you dr sojanya and uh, shashireka ji uh, has one more question about uh, salads i think uh, it selects only uh, take on this salads versus water vadi and uh, what the predominant conditions again salads increases vata so it should be avoided vikram ji has a question it's a, i think it's it would be a straight answer is shastika shali a variety of rice is it com- is it commonly available in india so many people may not be knowing about shastika shali throw some light on that dr sojini uh, so shastika shali is uh, usually available in india it, it is a variety of rice so you can buy it directly sir shastika shali uh, rice is available it is a paddy grown in 60 days that is why it is called as shastika or shastika in 60 days it is grown that is available in india so it can be available for purchase also i think it will be available on online stores also and uh, natural nilima ji once again there is a question will soaked almonds and other nuts are also not recommended to reduce vata vyadhi so are these yeah. remedies or yeah it is not recommended these are the causative factors not recommended not recommended. Uh, okay uh, jay ragu ji again uh, i think uh, there is some explanation for the sugar component what we were discussing uh sugar increases inflammation contributes to joint pains uh, is it how sugar is made of any chemical in sugar could uh, cause it so sugars could have some chemicals and uh, they could cause joint pains and what are they so could it be uh, could don't be don't know sir i have to explore yeah. hypothetically uh, we can consider but uh, can't make a sure statement here uh, can adding soaked nuts in smoothies help in reducing vata dosha <laughs> natural nirima ji again no smoothies so no soaked nuts it doesn't help in reducing vata dosha vata dosha uh, kalpana ji tells i remember now once dr abbar had one session on sprouts and dr gurraja explained Uh, when seed sprouts it uh, creates some enzymes to protect itself from bugs etc those enzymes can be harmful to us if we eat on excess uh, quantities uh, thank you kalpana ji for throwing some light on that so that's what uh, we were discussing here yeah vikram ji uh, asks dr sojanya you mentioned about avoiding cabbage in relation to vata vadi how about fermented cabbage such as uh, our sauerkraut i think uh, yeah please avoid it sir again it please causes vata vadi is uh, using ragi daily is it good it's a generalized question not pertaining to vata vadi again lavana prasad ji asked the question uh, if a person is uh, if a person is susceptible to eating ragi since childhood and desha the ragi is grown then it is fine because ragi mudda is quite a normal staple diet in many villages but if you are not accustomed please don't start it consuming soaked and peeled almonds on regular basis are uh, beneficial in vata disorders or not you can keep your answers mm, simple no, no okay what is the best way to consume nuts natural nilai maji general to question again to consume as it is not to soak not to heat not to fry just you have to consume it as it is uh, kavita koli ji asks being in usa should we give importance to local food or what we are used to from the beginning because living in usa we are uh, eating all foods from india uh, like uh, some foods are available in us and uh, people have uh, a practice of taking some things in india suddenly they go to us and uh, there is a transition so should we uh, suddenly transit and also get accommodated and also adjust to those foods 
or still we should continue using the foods uh, in india because of the sap method or uh, since even us have food stores where indian foods are available rather than suddenly shifting slowly uh, take leaving this and taking up the foods which are available there will be helpful even for gut even for vatavyadi thank you there uh, dr sojana and yeah, just uh, i would uh, add about uh, this uh, diet for uh, vatavyadi so when we did vaisajya ratnavali in the uh, every chapter when the chapter ends they have specific uh, patya and apatya mentioned so for vatavyadi chapter if you read in vaisajya ratnavali the ch- when chapter is ending there is a two big uh, shloka is there one of uh, one is for patya and another one is for apatya this apply to all the chapters in vaisajya ratnavali so i think it will be good to make a list from that book so these are the patya these are the apatya for vatyadi among them we can i think adjust anywhere in the world any country so just that's my point vaisajya ratnavali uh, last shloka of all the chapters let's uh, say is about patya apatya for specific dishes uh, thank you very much dr vinikant uh, so it would be really good if you can share that information with uh, all of us as we come to the end of uh, the session uh, so hearty thanks on behalf of uh, uh, easy ayurveda to dr uh, sojanya for being here and presenting on such a wonderful t- uh, topic uh, um nidana panchaka of vatavadi to understand the treatment basics it is very important to understand the basics of the disease and also the nidana panchaka so an elaborative presentation and also good discussion and thanks for answering all the questions uh, on the easy ayurveda gurukula platform so on behalf of all our participants and easy ayurveda family and easy ayurveda a big thanks to dr sojanya thank you dr sojanya thank you so much sir for this opportunity thank you sir thank you thank you so much and uh, so we'll be continuing this water vadi sessions with dr saujanya uh, in the interim so in uh, space between uh, uh, different other presentations uh, thanks to all our participants for wonderful uh, participation for being here and also for creating a lot of energy through your questions and uh, being there in the interactions and uh, thanks to all those who have posted the questions so dr rajnikant dr padmanabh ji and everybody who i have missed out personally to thank uh, for asking those questions wonderful session it was indeed uh, a big thanks to all our participants uh, from easy ayurveda and uh, plenty of love from easy ayurveda namaste to all